Hello IB students, higher level and standard level. I thought this video would be quite useful for you to see what mistakes to avoid in paper two. These are the, the really common ones that I see all the time in marking paper two scripts. Structure is always the issue. Doesn't matter what paper it is, paper one or paper two. Structure of these long essays is always an issue. So follow my guidance on how to structure eight markers to avoid that kind of mistake. Time management, you know it's potentially a problem if you don't practice under time conditions. If you don't understand with a strategy going into the exam how to allocate time, you're going to be doomed. So follow my tips that I gave you before on how to allocate your time and you can avoid that mistake. The best way to overcome this, guys, though, is practice. Put yourself under those time conditions to know that in 30 minutes you can write a damn good A marker, for example. You don't know unless you put yourself under the, uh, under the pressure. Number three, I'd say, is a really, really, really important thing. Can you believe that IB put reference to text and data on the front cover of the examination. Now what kind of exam board would do that? Well an exam board that's basically telling you the student how important it is to do this well. Um, so students that don't refer to text and or data when they are told to on the 8 marker are in trouble. Sometimes you're told to do it on the 4 marker as well. So if you don't, if you ignore that, you're in trouble. Paper 2 is a case study paper. They want you to use that case study to get into it to really enjoy it. And if you don't, you're not going to score the good marks, are you? You're going to frustrate the exam, and that's the worst thing you want to do. So lack of reference, uh, lack of explicit reference, can be a very costly mistake. On the 8 mark, you'll be capped. But at the same time, the other extreme, if you overuse it, on an 8 mark question, for example, you keep quoting, 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 and you're not just quoting like a few bits, you're quoting like long sentences, then your writing is not your writing. It's the IB examiner's writing, yeah? It's not going to get you very far at all. You're regurgitating material already given to you. That is a deadly trap to avoid. You want to make sure that your diagrams on these four mark questions, but also on the, the eight markers, especially the fours, are drawn accurately, that they are labelled proper, properly, and they are relevant to whatever the question is asking. The worst thing is if you mess up the diagrams. IB examiners love diagrams. Don't screw them up, you will get the examiner angry. But also, don't just plonk a diagram down and expect the examiner to understand everything you've done. Remember, assume the examiner is a non-economist, therefore you must analyse your diagram, talk about your diagram, refer to it, explain why you shifted curves, explain why the price has gone up or down, or real GDP has increased or decreased, explain everything on the diagram. That then will score you maximum marks. It's a common mistake, people just assume. They know that diagrams are important, but they assume that you know, after two years of studying economics that, yeah, surely this is obvious, and then they take liberties and shortcuts. The worst thing you can do, be careful. Limited evaluation and judgment. This is what separates the good from the best. The students that get sevens are able to evaluate and make judgments well. I've got two very important videos on how to make evaluations and judgments strong in economics essays watch those videos, make sure you're not the student that struggles with these two very important concepts. And just generally a lack of depth in writing. And a lack of depth in definitions. It's important to talk about definitions because you're going to have uh, various two markers to do. In your paper two you'll have four two markers to do and maybe all four will be definitions. So if you don't write in depth you're not going to get into that second band, are you, where that second mark lies. But a general lack of depth will cost you in all these questions, whether it's the four markers or the eight markers. So Remember how to write in chains of analysis in depth to make sure your paragraphs are really chunky and detailed. Uh, watch my video on how to write a good economics paragraph, an amazing paragraph, for you to make sure that your depth is always strong. So these are very common errors in paper two. They frustrate me endlessly when I keep marking paper twos that fall into these traps. So frustrating. Hopefully this video uh, awakens you to the potential problems that will exist and therefore you're not going to make these problems. Thanks for watching. Good luck in your exam, guys. See you in the next video.